most dudes don't truly care about your past unless it's affecting this right here. Right now. Welcome to another episode of Something for the People. This is your boy B Hunt, aka the Silent Prophet, along with my co-host Big Country. What's good, people? How y'all doing? Couldn't you couldn't let the process be the process. Mm. And in, and that's the frustrating part about it is that's when that broken person goes to another person mm -hmm. and, that, creates that. and creates another broken person. Welcome to another episode of Something for the People. This is your boy B Hunt, aka the Silent Prophet, along with my co host Big Country. What's good, people? Top notch, still being pleasant. We got our producer. What's good? And also, for your viewing pleasure, we have BG. BG. Top notch. Outside of that, we're going to jump right into it. Shooting the breeze. In recent survey, it states that 33% of women admit to going on dates. Simply for the free meal. And this is where that issue that a lot of guys come into and everybody's like, no, people don't do that. Yes, they do. There are people that go on dates just to get a free meal. No, 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 they don't. They're really interested in you. It's showing surveys now of women actually admitting 33% of them saying that they go on date just for the meal. So how many don't admit it? If 33% will admit it, how many don't admit it? My question to that would be, how many people have, it's, it's an advertising situation. You know, they say you get zero down on a car, you gonna go to that dealership. I'm gonna just go ahead and go. Now, if I walk out with a car, you know, it is what it is. But, I'm saying, how did they ask the question? Did they ask the question in a way to make you be like, oh, have you ever went on a date just for the meal? Yeah. But they didn't ask, when you went for a free meal, did you walk out with a free man? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a, a relationship. But if the real, if I never want to go on a date and be like, hey, are you with me for me because you are actually interested in me or are you with me because... I'm buying you this red lobster. Well, my bad. They don't even want red lobster yeah, anymore. Yeah. You can't you can't do that no more. Oh, this Ruth Chris, this Perry Steakhouse, this these high extravagant places you want to eat at. And that's the thing is, it's like a date now is like an arm and a leg. But think about this. Does it really matter? Because yes, it matters. No, because nobody else guy, to get screwed. Let, let's let's take the survey of a guy. Okay. How many are going to dates just to Try to get to the, the home smash. run. You're okay. right. You're right. It's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be more than thirty-three. But you know. Uh, but and the home run three. is something you give for free. But are they going for free? I don't think it'll be thirty-three percent because you ain't gonna admit to that. It's not like I'm not. I'm not that shy. Well, it depends on who you ask. Because you go around and just ask a dude and be like, Nah, bro, that ain't how that. But I'm also, trying though, to talk to. But I get hit. You but you can say you're gonna be anonymous, and they be like, Oh, all right, yeah, so that, yeah. <laughs> But the issue that I have... <laughs> so everybody's going in there with no. a, so hey, I'm can't... in it for this, I'm in it for that. It's, it's the same thing. That's what I to it's, contract. It would be close to the same thing, except I'm paying. If I'm paying for it versus you, what you give me is for free. Like, it, you mm -hmm. did not have to pay for that. I mean, that, that's that, the person's soul. Like, that, that's a, that, oh, no, no. We can't no. hit that as a, mm -hmm. a person's soul thing because if we look at the way things are set up now, people throwing away, uh, giving away like it's nothing. It's like, hey, let's be honest. So they sold, sold for the double. Hey, I mean, you know, let, let's be happen. honest. You can't. It's like almost like you giving me the Cracker Jacks after everybody um, put their hand in the box. Everybody looking for the prize in the box, and you give me some, uh, give me some cracker jacks. So, oh, so time out. So if the woman is the cracker jack, where are we? Because oh, I ain't gonna lie, dude's trash. <laughs> we, we definitely ain't trash. I can't admit so, that at time. But the thing, especially is, when you okay, when you are younger. Let's be honest. You don't really have nothing to give. That's true. So you can't expect to be like, oh well, I'm this person. No. You the same as everybody else. Like if we go ten years 
ago when we were in our 20s. Mm -hmm. In your 20s, what did you really have to offer? I can draw a really nice picture of you. I can make you laugh. That's the only thing I can Take my phone, so. <laughs> I can give you a good conversation. <laughs> exactly. That's about it. That's all I have. So, I like, you know, as you've rare. gotten older, you know your stock has raised significantly higher. Hey, right. I pay bills. I can do all these things. I am a... a I'm a nurturer, I cook, I yes, clean, I do all these different things. I make money, and I make more than the average. So I'm like, yes, I have more things to offer you. But if you tell me the same thing that you had since birth, birth, you had that same thing. And then if you go statistically speaking, most girls giving it up around 15 now. So if you giving it up around 15, and you in your 20s right now, you're not going to tell me that, oh, basically, I should pay for something that you give away for free, depending on the type of man you want. Because we all know a chick. Every last one of us knows somebody mm -hmm. that it was like, you made that dude work hard. And that dude, oh, it was a Tuesday, so you know what? I mean, sometimes it's so special. It's a hit or miss, it's man. Hit or miss. I mean, it's hit or miss, bro. You know what I'm saying? But so you're saying that every woman you interacted with, you treated the same? Yes. Every, uh, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. There it is. Hold up, hold up. There it is. Hold up. Let's put this in context. Okay. When I was a hoe, every woman was treated the exact same way. And I know you're going to say men can't be hoes, they but cannot. I'm just... Uh, yes, they can. They cannot. Thank you. I, I, we're not going to go down this road. We need to go down this road. But all... I'll um, We're going to go down this road. <laughs> okay. My thing is when I was wilding out, when I was doing all this other kind of stuff, you yes, I treat them all the same. Now, when I was looking for a, a girlfriend at that point in time, I treated girlfriends in a girlfriend box. Girlfriends weren't treated like the others. But again, that... You put them in buckets, but they're still females at the end of the day. Yeah. So you treat them you differently. You think you're Compared something that's... Uh, and you, as a person, you say, oh, this is what I am. I'm this. I'm that. To you. That's not to me. To me, you either in this box or you in this box. And I know like, somebody going to be like, oh, that's so wrong. Everybody does it. Every I mean, single person does it. You, you sitting here telling me... You don't, uh, you are a married man. You love your wife to death. And I know you do. You tell me her box ain't different from the other girl's box? Yes, but what I'm saying is when we were younger, we put people in boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't tell people what box they were in. Well, of course I ain't going to tell you I what box you were in. I never had to tell you what box you were in. You should have. I don't. No. Now, I, now that I'm older, I'm like, hey, this is my wife. Exactly. Because as I've grown up, and she's became the love of my life. I, I'm willing to tell I, every single time we do this podcast, anywhere I go, everybody knows how much I love my wife. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how much I love my family yeah. because she deserves that title. You don't get extra perks just because you felt you deserve extra perks. Yeah, but what I'm saying is when we were younger, like, yes, your wife, Highest of standards. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when we was dating and being in our little phase, we should have told them, like, hey, this is what I... what this is. Yeah, this is what it is. And gave them the I decision. I told you you knew what it was. Gave them the decision, like, hey, either you're going to stay or you're going to go. I didn't give that option. So, <laughs> so that's my, that, that was my Sorry. fault. Yeah. But and I think that a lot of men did the same thing. Yeah. Like, And that's why they out here eating free sandwiches. What you're saying is, <laughs> is reparations right for right. all the wrong that we've done. These these kids these days are suffering because of what we did. What? But I never lied to anyone. I never told nobody. Lying with hell information. And withheld is lying. lying. If you ask me, you withheld for benefit. The, the, it, it is well, lying. And, and you it know, is, bro, it's just it's it's a lot of me who don't go to the doctor. Based on, I don't want the doctor to tell me I'm going to die in a couple of years. So, she ain't asking you because she don't really so want to know. She want to live oh, with her oh, Okay, no. So, prime example. Uh, the, the the case with Dominique Jones and the NFL player. The 
the guy was dating this chick. Okay. Who was married. Okay. He didn't know he, she was married. Okay. And end up, like, he's he started talking to other women. She gets mad. Tell her brothers to go shoot up his shit. I don't know okay. what this. Yeah, you but, can. But, yeah, so, so shoot him up. So he ends up shooting the people. One end of them dying. And so he got taken to jail. He got... He was uh, told he was not guilty, but the simple fact, uh, fact that she told him, like, hey, go over there, and he's protecting himself. Now, they, to pull it uh, full circle, the girl said that she didn't tell him that he was married because he didn't ask. That's what tells the information, is not. That is what tells the information. Like, why do I need to, if I'm dating you, why do I need to say, hey, are you married? Like, like that's not, <laughs> that's not <laughs> Hold up, hold up, pause, pause, pause. Because we're talking about in life now. Most people need to ask because, yes, men and women both will sit there and lie. But there's, Most an, people, there's an assumption. So what's the difference the between now and then? Okay, when, when you are younger, you uh, uh, you do a lot of dumb things. Like, <laughs> okay, uh, hang on, hang on. I, I get, uh, I give you a perfect example. I use this one because it was on uh, a thin line between love and hate. Because I always looked at that because I'm like, I ain't trying to be enough Martin Lawrence on there. Okay. So, the thing was, Martin got some wise advice from the older gentleman that ran Chocolate City. He was like, man, you think I don't want to be out here messing with these girls and all that? But I'm like, I love my old lady. And I realized over time, the older I got, the wiser choice my dick makes. So, my thing is, yes, as when I was, first of all, we all know when we were younger, we did dumb stuff that we were like, man, mm, yeah, did that? that? Is what it is. Mm, but, as you got older, you should realize, bruh, I got too much to lose me out here making these choices. Man, I don't always equate. But I, I, have I don't know how, I'm trying to figure out how does that Okay, I feel like they just doubled down on what, what he was just saying. Because she old enough to know that you are married now. Why are you messing with this man? And because he is who he is, you already know there are other women who are going to be shooting their shot. If you know you can't capitalize on the opportunity based on your status, which is married, why even put yourself in that position? Why put him in that position to make him risk his career and his life taking somebody else's life because you too selfish? With your, because at that point she's an old fool. Yes. With your old self messing with this man, it yes. just shouldn't be. And I'm but, not saying that. I'm not saying that. That's. I don't believe you should lie to anybody. Because I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to my wife. I hope my wife don't lie to me. Right. But my thing is, all these other people and all that other stuff. I ain't even got a lot of them. But if you weren't going to ask a certain question, mm -hmm. like, it's because you are deliberately trying to avoid it. If I ask, are you cheating on me? And that person says yes, I'm like, okay. But there's a lot of people who know that they spouse or they girl, they man, whoever is cheating on them. But then they're like, I'm still not going to ask. Oh, you should have just told me you were doing it. No. Ask the question. Like, I just feel like... Well, my thing is, it goes back to... We're older now, and yeah. I have a different perspective on, like, do I want to be wild out? No, because exactly. I enjoy my life, I enjoy my free time, and you realize when you were younger, running around doing all this other stuff, you wasted a lot of time that you could have been doing a, a whole bunch of other stuff. And I agree. But my thing is, you eliminate a lot of stuff with just being honest and forthcoming with, like, hey, this is this is what where I, I see us, this is what box I want to put you in. And from there, make your decision, yes or no, if you want to be here. Right. Now, there can be a lot of people that says no, but you'll be amazed at how many people say yes. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I put you in that box, but I'll still get you a free steak dinner or something. Yeah. It's benefits to being in the, in this box versus that one. Now, when you might have a lot more obligations. Like, if I'm upset, I, I would really like for my actual spouse to ask me why. You know, then a girl I'm pursuing, ask me why I'm upset. If you just the chick who, you know, in that special box that got a lot of less responsibilities, I might just be like, pull up and knock you down, relieve the stress, go home. I'll get you boxes. What, what you want? You want some Burger King, McDonald's? What you need? 
back in the day. I mean, right. well, you, you gotta give people options. Yeah, I, I didn't say you don't give them. But well, we didn't give people options back in the day. You take away the choice for people. It's, it's all if options. I told you, if I, I told you, I'm not looking for no relationship. That's what. Those are your options. I'm not looking for a relationship. Oh, will you do relationship things? No, I just don't treat you like trash. But this is the thing. So you say that I don't, I'm not looking for a relationship. Yeah. But then eventually you get in a relationship. That person look like. So we're going to look for a relationship? You, you know when I got into a relationship? Easy. I graduated college. That's when I got into my last relationship, and that's my wife. That's the person I got into the last relationship with. Right. After college. I didn't say that after college. I said that all during, uh, uh, like, after the other one. And then I was like, oh, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not, oh, well, you're so nice. I, I'm not looking for a relationship. But the, so I didn't lie to you. They saying, like, eventually you're going to choose one, and they just want to be because, an eligible candidate. Like, because what they're going to think of is you're not looking for one, but once you do look for one, I'm in the here. running. I was here. And I'm saying is that when we're young, we should just say, like, hey, me and you, we have this thing. That's that's what I that's what I want. So I, you, I don't need a relationship. What you messed up at is that you gave them too much good treatment. So, and that's why I be. That, I'm not, that's that, like the. I don't see. I, uh, to me, I'm like is, that is bad because how the hell can I well, not give I you? Don't agree with, I should. I, don't I should agree with treat you like <laughs> trash. Because <laughs> no, it's not treat you like trash. I'm actually treating you a lot better. I'm telling yes. you what it is. So whenever you get tired of whatever this is. You can walk away knowing I didn't lose nothing because it was never gonna grow into nothing. And then you think about it, like you can still treat them good. You can, you and that's what I did. You treat people with respect saying. and stuff. So there's a standard that you should have for everybody. Yeah, so I'm not gonna like, oh, just because oh. you're in this box, I'm gonna treat you like trash. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I never you, said in no. one box you get uh, no, trash, no. one box you but get. But what I'm saying uh, is, is that people can have that uh, perspective, and that's why you should tell them which box they're in because. If you treat them with a standard, if they think like, hey, I got a chance, they're gonna be like, okay, well, I'm good. Like he he really feeling me. Yeah. When it's just, I'm just treating you like It's almost person. like the Chris Tucker. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? No, they didn't. So <laughs> it really didn't. I I I, I think <laughs> this is funny. So <laughs> because what you did was is you gave them a false expectation. Yes. That's what happened. Indirectly. Indirectly. You didn't do it on purpose because you 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 set a standard of I'm gonna treat you good. But you also gave them the expectation of if he does decide to pick a person to be with, mm. I have a legitimate shot of being with him because he gave me a standard of treatment. Yep. But just like the guy that's in the friend zone who think that they can get out of the friend exactly. zone by being close. Exactly. I mean, it's the same so, thing. So it's, it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. It's just reversed. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> because, no, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know how many guys have been put into the friend zone? But you, but it's, it's the... It's the if you look at it on the other side, it's the same thing on the woman's side. Because you, you literally gave her a better treatment than most dudes would give her. And then with her thinking like, hey, dang, you know, he didn't he do this to me, he do this, 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 and the third. And then you done moved on and now you done went to you done, you done went to the first person outside of her mm -hmm. and committed to this one and it's like, wait, but then why he didn't pick me? You know what I'm <laughs> Just like, think about it, if you was in their shoes and you was like, man, I, I took her on dates, I did this, that, and the third. And, and she said she wasn't looking for a relationship, so, you know. But the second she found somebody, and, and let's just say, to amplify, they look exactly like you. Same <laughs> height, same bill, same everything. Ooh. And he just showed up. And she like, I like him, I'm going to be with him. You're going to be like, wait. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I took you to the Paris. I took you to every steakhouse that you know. And have you met, I put it the bill. And he looked just like we might be related. How he get it and I didn't. What did he do that I didn't do? 
That'll be a different type of hot that I would be. <laughs> it's a whole nother level. Oh, you yeah. could have kept it. You could have said everything, but when you said it looked just like me, like that, that, that just took it over top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that keeps your pride right there. Every time I ask for real. All I'm going to be cussed all yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Every so woman I've talked to is different from night and day. Some were introverted, some were extroverted. Some were um, different races, some were all that different types of stuff because I wanted to make sure that I didn't just settle for one thing. Like, I've dated big girls, I've dated small girls, I've dated light skin, dark skin, uh-huh. all that kind of but stuff. you know what the common denominator and all that was? Me. Your level of service. Yeah. So, so I'm supposed to give you trash service? <laughs> We're we not we saying that. That's, 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 that's almost, that's, 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 what, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> is because I said, hey, like, if you decide you want to go with this product right here, you get at least this level of service. I know for a fact I've done way more for my wife than anybody else because she got the premium package. Right. Y'all got basic and level package, but you're like, oh, because my basic was better than the other dude's basic. Honestly, he giving me premium. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, but see, you didn't. That's not my fault. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Because that's, like, that's like Metro versus Verizon. I'm just saying, you can easily <laughs> tell who I'm like, hey, you, you're just for the, the late nights. Um, we can we kick it, but up front, we just going for the home run. And with that, I'm, I'm still treating you respectful. If I'm, you want something to eat, I'm, I'm getting something to eat. But, but I'm not yeah. going. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to take it to the next level. It's not, yeah. it's not more. It's, 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 it might, it might look like, no but yeah. understand, yeah. I'm, we never going to ascend past this. Yeah, we right. always going to stay that, right about here. And that would have, that would have, Eliminate a lot of uh, headaches. Yeah, she wouldn't have been upset. I mean, she might have been upset, but at that point, you gave and you give them the control back. Like, yeah, I said, but you establish it early, and they choose yes or no. Sure. And if it doesn't go the way they wanted to, be like, hey, this, this, this is what we said. This is what it, you you was there. You could have said no. But we we I think us as men, we always give that false illusion because we want everything. We, we, want, we want that cake and we want to eat it too. Right. right. Exactly. So. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. But as, like you said earlier, as I've grown older, and I've, I've paid attention, yeah. it probably would have been far better for me to go and just tell you exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. That way, nobody hurt me. Yep. You might get, it might sting in the beginning, but at the end, you know exactly what it was as I told you what it was. I never made it. But if I told you that I don't want no relationship, ain't that what it is? You wasn't clear enough. No. Bruh, do you know exactly what else do you hold up? What else do you actually say? I don't want a relationship with you. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Because eventually I'm gonna want one and I'm still not gonna want you. You gotta be you gotta be clear. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like on to the next subject. It's, it's, like, it's, it's so, not it's something to agree or disagree with. It's just a different perspective. Like, right. you'll have your perspective, we're going to have ours. And, and it's 33% of women just looking for reparations. Date reparations. Yeah. Uh-huh. They mm-hmm. want, they want, they stay. So they then, stay wouldn't too. that leave the next that. generation, real quick before we mm-hmm. go on, wouldn't that leave the next generation, 33% of men are like, hey, I'm just going to smash. That's it. So uh, Because right. it's a cycle. It's a it's cycle. cycle. Yeah. But, Okay, let's put the shoe on the other foot now. If you had an opportunity back in the day to get a free meal from a woman, you ain't taking it? I mean, people cook for me all that kind of stuff. I'm saying, they said, I want to take you on a date to a steakhouse, Ruth Chris or whatever steakhouse it is. You ain't and, taking it. Yes, I'm going to take it, but then I'm going to oblige her afterwards because but, I'm like, thank okay, you for it. But... They make it sound like prostitution. That does, but... <laughs> Uh, well, Let's just say, no, but this, this is a girl that you are not attracted to at all. You ain't I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't go. I ain't going to lie. I'm hold up, hold up, hold up. It, it, it depends. <laughs> then, how hungry am I? You uh, college hungry. hungry. <laughs> what? You know how broke people are. <laughs> who, who, who's not hungry in college, bro? Boy, don't top, have five you tell me <laughs> I got the difference between this top ramen out and eight for the last two, three months and steak, and the only difference is I got to sit next to you. You can't have a conversation. I'll talk to you mm-hmm. all night, 
Look, I got ten jokes waiting for you. What? That's gonna be one day that I prepare for because I'm gonna try to get her to take me again. <laughs> and yeah. Like, hey, let me. So this is. I got like, a conversation. The thing is, yeah. <laughs> as, as a human being, <laughs> you know you have advantages of certain things, and if you know, like, hey, with my advantages, I get free stuff or free whatever, you gonna take advantage of it. Like, yeah. It's just human nature. You can't blame them for for saying like, but man wants this. I have, I have this. In exchange, they gonna give me a free meal. Supply and demand. Economics. Basic. Basic economics. Is the 80 20 rule still relevant? And how do you get to 100 800? Is 100 100 even possible? I mean, I um, think some um, days possibly, but it's not gonna be, oh, uh, always 100 100. I don't think that's actually possible for you go through your whole relationship or marriage or whatever, and you both actually always giving a hundred, a hundred. There are going to be some days where it's going to be almost like that level, that um, pendulum where it swings back and forward. And do you want a hundred, hundred? Some days you do want a hundred. Some days, like, hey, put in that work. Just like I want... Just like there are some days, you know, as a guy is like, man, she asked for a lot. Like, but I, I, I guess I think about it not in days, but lifespan. So it averages out. Like some days you, you get a hundred. Yeah. Some days you get eighty. Maybe you get fifty. Maybe I, I'm just want to be by myself and, and relax. Yeah. But it's going to average out to eighty, twenty, or whatever percentage. It's past yeah. 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 Yeah, and that's a, uh, I agree with that. It's like, hopefully, if it's not at least a 70 or above, 70 is passing. Mm-hmm. Don't, uh, don't get me wrong. I think you should strive for that A, but every day, all the time, nobody's getting the A all the time. I, how I see it is, it's like a speed limit. Granted, your car probably top out at 120, you know, 130, 140. But... We gonna get to that seventy because that's the standard. That's what everybody's looking for. It's it's a comfortable speed for you, me, and everybody. And also, you ain't gonna blow the motor on your car and going and down the street. For the viewers, can we just say what the eighty twenty rule is, just for the people that don't. Okay. So the eighty twenty one uh, rule actually was is that you're never going to get a hundred percent of a person of all the things you want that you're looking for in one particular person. So, a lot of people will push away 80% because they're looking for that 20% of things that they're not getting out of that 80. And they can mess up and mess around and only get 20% trying to reach for just the 20 instead of keeping the 80 that they have. Right. So it's almost like, let's say, like for example, my wife doesn't cook. That could be a little bit off the uh, belt and all that. Now, if, let's say, I was looking for someone to cook, she can cook great, but she ain't got none of the other qualities that my wife has. Mm-hmm. Why would I give up just for someone that cooks? Like, oh my gosh, she's great at that. That's the plight of him. You sit back and you grow comfortable in what you have, and and you get to taking it for granted. You expect it to always be there, yeah. and once you see something that you actually lack, you can have a, a, a whole orchard full of every fruit you can imagine, but that one apple tree on your neighbor's yard yeah. upsets you. Why don't I have an apple tree? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got grapes, oranges, you name it, you got it, but you I don't have an apple tree. And it can even be that. I just don't have a red apple tree. I got a green apple back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't have red. That's like so the you, old, uh, that old saying, the grass is greener on the other side. Always something you lack it. Yeah. We as humans, we only, like, typically we only recognize the negative. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. you recognize you don't have. Yeah. You get a car, instead of saying, I'm no longer walking, you saying, I don't have a Ferrari though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you yeah. always looking to upgrade. The we got all this we got all this land out here, but there's snakes outside. You always find a negative. I gotta get rid of the snakes or I don't wanna have it. Yeah. yeah. But see if you don't get rid of the uh, if you get rid of the snakes, 
He got, got the mice. He got the rats. He, mm -hmm. It's always it's a give and take. It's like, mm -hmm. that's why it's the hundred, the, the 80, 20. It's always gonna be something that's a little off. And it's yeah. not, and it's not that it's because it's actually off, but there's a stand, there's a standard of life. Like it's a it's a median that life is gonna meet. It's never gonna be perfect. It's mm -hmm. always gonna have room for improvement. But in seeking that improvement, you lose on the back end, so you never get to perfect. It's always a sliding scale. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I like the 80 20 rule or perspective is because you have that foundation where y'all equally yoke. But then there's some differences where you might like something, you might like something different. Right. But five, ten years, your perspective is going to change or should change. You shouldn't stay in the same spot as you were ten years ago. Right. right. And so that 20%, it can change for, for good or, or worse, but it gives room where as you grow, y'all growing together instead of splitting up because if y'all 100% and then all of a sudden it gets down to 90, 90 10. You're like, man, where did 10% go? Well, hey, and, not, and now you're pissed. Yeah, you're trying to figure out the loss. And now you're trying to say like, well, that ain't work. Let's just go to the, the, the next person that got 100%. No. And then yeah. you end up with a, a far worse deal because it's like where she was given 90, right? But she started with 100, she dropped down to 90. This person is giving 100%, but that 100% ain't equivalent to the 90 that I lost. Yep. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people do that. That's why divorce is so high now. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my God, they have more than what I have here. So I want what they have over there. So I'm going to leave this over here mm -hmm. and go over there. Then when you actually go over there, oh, this wasn't everything I thought it was going to be. It's true. And then some people try to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what, what, one thing that people do know, there's a story to this one. There was this guy, he went to this garage sale, and it was this little chain that it was LeBron James' chain on it, and he bought the chain. It was like, like 10 bucks. And turns out there was a real chain. Like, it was real diamonds, real gold, and everything. But the person was like, you didn't know what you had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course... I did a garage sale. You come and tell me that I just gave you some real gold. Yeah. I want it back. Like, right. bro, I, it was a mistake. It was a this, that, and a third. It shouldn't have been on the table in the first place. But yeah. it's fine now. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do about that? I, just because you left something good thinking it was trash and I showed you the value in it don't mean I'm going to turn around and be like, oh, you're right. My bad, bro. I didn't mean to take your, your treasure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, bro, it's a whole, it's a lot of pirates out here. <laughs> Yeah, when man. I find a treasure, it's mine. Man, so, my uh, basketball coach, when I was in high school, he made a, a quote like that. He's like, don't go chasing pirates. And when you're in high school, you're like, man, you talking about the women, of course. Right. And you're like, in, in high school, you're like, ah, you're just joking, coach, blah, 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 blah. You, you do, you got wild. But now you're older, you're like, that makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah. don't chase the pirates because they're going to try to steal your treasure. This is what it is. Which could be like, NBA contract, or maybe you have a good job. Yeah. Shoot, some people they mess with the wrong person, they in jail because She's locked up. That, yep. Mm -hmm. Done for. And I, I feel like man, people don't have enough conversation when it comes to stuff because you know over the years, man, your needs change. Yeah. yeah. And so mm -hmm. that twenty percent, like you say, may turn into ten, mm -hmm. but in the midst of that, your needs change, and you don't talk about it. Right, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Wow. And so you end up trying to move on and end up not even talking about why you dipping out. You yep. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, hey, I want out of this relationship or I want out of this marriage. Well, why do you want to leave? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I you mean, just start doing stuff. You know, you just yeah. start mm -hmm. doing irrational stuff to be like, oh, I want to get up out of here or I'm going to sabotage this. But you never even had the conversation to talk about why you want to get out of this or why you're unhappy or why that need has changed. Because right. the 20-year-old you or the 20-year-old you is different than the 30-year-old you. Oh, and the 30-year-old you is going to be vastly different than the 40-year-old you. Agreed. We change and evolve over time. Or at least you should. Yeah. No, you would you hope. Know, you, would, yeah. you would hope that you do. So, like, people just... I feel like lack of conversation and lack of knowing your partner sometimes is, is, is the thing that people just don't pay attention to. I think people are afraid of conversation, like you, to your point, is that sometimes you got to have a tough, tough conversation saying that, hey, I'm not happy with this. It can be something small. Right. They just try to like, oh, I don't want to have an argument. Let, let me just build it in. So they, they hold it in, 
some else happens, some else happens. It's just build on top of each other. And then once they unleash, the other person's like, why are you, why are you mad? Like, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. And then at that point, it's too late. And so... It's, um, it's that compound. It, they, and like little things, like if we talk about it when it's little, yeah. it's like, okay, cool. It may be a little friction, but when things start compounding on top of each other, mm -hmm. and then you let it all out at once, mm -hmm. it's like, now it becomes a big issue, and it's like, hey, but if you were actually got these things fixed, and, uh, and look, hey, it may have been a little tension, mm -hmm. but I know part of it, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm guilty of doing that, too, because it's almost like, hey, I don't want to mess up a, a good moment, a good thing going on right now with something that is not that big. It's just like whatever. Yeah. But as I started getting older, as I started thinking, I'm like, man, those little things start turning into big things, mm -hmm. and then it get you know, pressure burst pipes. Mm -hmm. After so long, that one pipe going, and now next thing you know, Oh, it may be something you could recover from, may not be something you could recover from. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then the person that you blow up at be blindsided, like, what the hell where did this come mm -hmm. from? And it's like, why you didn't say nothing when it first happened? Yeah. Right. And then you you know, it's a whole issue. And like sometimes we we try to let the people that we be in these relationships over these marriages that we in, we let them get a pass because it's like, oh well, you know, it ain't really just that big of a deal, you know. It didn't bother me at first, but then it, it like you say it builds and then every time you see it happen it gets annoying and mm -hmm. then the annoyance turns into a frustration and then the frustration turns into an anger mm -hmm. and then it just just keeps going and so like he said you don't want to mess up a good moment but a lot of times if you just go ahead and be like hey you know i don't really like that you do this mm -hmm. or it's all about how you approach it yep. and, you know and a lot of the times if you just go ahead and say it They'll receive it well, and it's and a lot of times it's how you see it. If okay. you come to them in a in a a loving tone, they'll be like, "Okay, I can see how that can be a thing." Mm -hmm. But if it's more of a anger and pointing fingers, they're like, "Man, I, I, I'm not gonna receive that with them." You know what I'm saying? Like they're not they they're not gonna really just be like, mm, "Okay, so now you you yelling there, you fussing at me." I don't, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna tune you out, and I, we not gonna ain't nobody listening because now at that point. You not receiving what I'm saying because you yelling or you feel like you're being yelled at and now I'm frustrated with you because you're not hearing me. Right. So now mm -hmm. nothing's getting accomplished. But also you gotta take into account every time you let the small thing slide, you basically giving like approval. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I'm yeah. sitting yeah. up here, you said something out of line and I didn't correct it because I'm trying to preserve the moment, like I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep everybody peaceful. And mm -hmm. then you didn't say anything at the moment. Mm -hmm. and then you get home, you don't come back to it because you like you never had that conversation. Yeah. So every time you don't have that conversation, you watering that tree. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, when it's a seedling, a little slap sapling, you know, if you would have nipped it in the bud when it was small, you could have just pulled it out of the ground and moved on. But you every time you gave it permission to grow, every time you gave mm -hmm. it permission to persist. You let that small little sapling turn into a mighty oak, and now you're trying to go pull it out of the ground. Yeah. yeah. And you're getting upset that you're getting a lot of resistance and friction from it, but it's like, you grew this. Yeah. Yo, when you did nothing, you did everything. You gave every, you gave it all the room it needed to grow. And now that, that's when you get that, this how I was when you met me. You knew who I was when you met me. But I knew who you was, and when I had the opportunity to tweak you a little bit, I did it. Yeah. All right. So now I got to deal with this tree, or I need to switch property or cut this tree down. Yep. Basically, I got to kill this relationship. Or, you know, what are we going to do? I got to live with it, or I got to cut you down. Yeah. yeah. And there's two things with that. And so a person needs to be able to be open and communicate that, hey, I don't like certain things. Mm -hmm. And then a person receiving it got to be able to, like, hey, I ain't 100%. I can change. I can change. Because twenty year old me, oh no, I'm I'm the prize. I'm, I'm me. <laughs> yeah. So you, you get me <laughs> what it is, but now I'm like, hey, I can change. I can I can be better. I can and prime example is like, is is kind of going to what you were saying, um, Behunt, is that you don't know what you don't know. 
Right. Okay. Because like there's times where I buy little things here and there. I, I got like really into like lawn equipment. So I was like, I need this. My wife was like, yeah, buy it, buy it. And so then it got to a point where we were like, we're going to start budgeting. And she said, I want this. And I'm like, no, we can't do it with a budget. So she was upset. She's like, you bought all these things, but I can't buy this one thing. And I was like, I haven't thought about that. So I was like, you know what? Bump that budget. Go buy it. Right. But now I'm more conscious of like, hey, if she wants something, let me actually think about it like, even if we're, we're like a we're budget down, but how can we fit it in the budget? How can we move things around so she can have her things? Because anytime I want something, it's more time than yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, yeah, yeah. It's and how it is. It's, I, it's something else. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like that was a great point to close that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How are ways men and women show toxic traits? So what ways do women and men show toxic traits. What we gotta figure out what would be a toxic like 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 there's a lot of times where we'll point fingers at each other and I think that's a toxic trait right mm-hmm. there. It's like when you're always pointing a finger at the other person like oh it could never be me. It, it, it's never me. I never do that. It's like at some point in time you have to really look and say Am I doing something? Like, that's almost like, like, if you have siblings, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You got a little brother or older brother, little sister, whatever, and they just almost keep poking you and poking you <laughs> and poking you. And then you get to a point where you're like, now I'm up. Hey, why are you mad? Like, what, what's the issue? And it's like, bro, you've been poking me all this time. You know it pissing me off. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, nah, I didn't know I would piss you off. It's like, yes, you did. Because you wouldn't have kept poking me if it didn't piss me off. Right. So that's one, uh, that's a trait that men and women both share. You know this gets under somebody's skin. And I know some people are like, how do I know? I'm like, if, if, if that person shut down on you, obviously it's getting under their skin. It, it, that, that's... That's just like going to a petting zoo, but instead of petting baby goats, we petting tigers and lions. Everybody want to pet the tiger. Everybody wants to pet you with the lion. But the flash upsets the lion. The flash upsets the tiger. So it's like, I'm doing this because I do find joy. Look, when you look at a firecracker, fam, firecrackers typically have short fuses. The longer the fuse, Typically informs you to the power or, or how big this explosive mm-hmm. is going to be. You got a firework over there. Look at that fuse. And then think about a black cat. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they keep poking you because you got a long fuse. The problem is if you keep poking me, you don't see it streaking. I don't. He usually <laughs> let me get away with this. He yeah. usually, but when you do explode, he like, whoa, bro. Yeah. Why? Why we go to that level? Because the last thing I remember, all I did was poke you. Yeah. And he, no, nah, you lit the fuse an hour ago with the first poke, and you poked me a hundred times. We are now at 99, and you think you're going to touch me 100. Bruh, I'm going to blow up on you. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think, so I'm like, we trying to figure out toxic traits. I'm like, the person blowing up, that's a toxic trait. You need to speak up. But it's also a toxic trait for that person to be like, I need to see how long this fuse is. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. how far I could go with it? That's the re- How do we? Ad- the question that we ask: How do we identify that? How do we? Because you might meet that person who that really just don't bother them, and maybe that's the perfect match for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you, or you might be dealing with the person with the short fuse, and you poke them one time, and they blow up. Like, honestly, I could say it like this: Shout out to my uncle Gary. He is one of the most level-headed people I ever met. Like, when you talk to him, he's almost always joyful, happy, and things. But my Aunt Vicky can tell you, when he get pissed off, he pissed now. It's like, everybody uh, uh, like everybody has a fuse. Some people's fuse is way longer than the other one. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing is, is everybody has a fuse. It's only so far you can push anyone, man, woman, child, or whatever, because 
there are sometimes, even as a kid, you know, you kind of blew up, but then you knew you were going to get whooping after it. But it was like, okay, it went to that level, and then it's like, now I said that. Yeah, I'm going to get this whooping, but I'm going to say what I had to say. Mine, so, you know, I spent a long time in my younger years in anger management. So, it just, you know, I was, yeah. I, I did, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you know, I developed a thought process that's called righteous anger, okay? Mm-hmm. So, if I'm right and I blow up, I don't feel nothing like there's not a too far. If I'm right, then I'm right. You was wrong. But I'm going to give you ample instances in between there before I get to righteous anger that's no return to let you know, hey, you crossing that line. Hey, you stepping over that line. Bro, you in the danger zone. Bro, I'm finna fuck you up now. Yeah. Once we reach fuck you up, you had all this time before fuck you up where I verbally will let you know you crossing. You overstepping. You're doing too much. You need to chill. You need to stop. Yeah. So I'm like, it's no longer toxic for me. I'm not, I've clearly defined there is a fuse. It yeah. is getting shorter. It is getting to a point where when it goes off, you're not going to like what you get. Yeah. Man, decide. We here now. The next time you do whatever you did, don't put me here. Do you want it? Because I'm not going to go back and try to, like, we ain't going to have no discussion. We're going to figure none of that out. It's figured out now. Yeah. When you have the opportunity to do what you need to do to, to counteract this reaction, you had no regard for who you was dealing with. Most of the time, I'm... To myself, quiet, reserved, sitting in the back. If you're dealing with me, I'm a smile, joke, have a good time, all that. That's more so for your safety. Look, this is the petting zoo, but they put the wrong animal in this petting zoo, bro. I'm still a lion, bro. I'm still a tiger out here. I don't really want to deal with you on that level. I'm not here for the short conversations, the petty conversations, the useless conversations. Come talk to me about some substance or go do something else. There's a lot of other animals in this zoo, bro. <laughs> go deal with them. But when you come over here, you're going to show up with respect, and I'm going to let you know, hey, bro, that gate there for a reason. Yeah. Respect that gate. Yeah. You like, if you look all you want, but don't touch. But I think the toxic traits comes in where there's no communication, where one person might like something, some person doesn't. But you got to communicate, like, early, like, hey, I, I'm not feeling that. That, that, that. Don't do that. And then the first guy I Respect it, or if they keep up in, then yeah. to your point, right? Just saying, you deal with whatever comes with it. Yeah, you said that. Yeah. So I still don't feel like you touched anything as far as to- what are. Well, how I, do you identify toxic? Traits? I think the problem is, is that that word has been saturated. Yeah. So we don't know how to actually define. It. Well, because you know everything has been considered toxic. Right. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it comes to masculinity. Everything, like, it, even with even well on the female side, a lot of the things they they do now is considered yeah, like toxic. getting free food. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know we ain't gonna just put it on us. You know, what I'm saying yeah. people, like people is they don't know true definitions of anything anymore because well, you I do think, realize definitions be changing now. It does. Like. And that's the thing is but because is, point, it, is it the definition is changing because of well here's my definition. did they put it in, in the Webster or did we change it? Webster actually changes definitions now. They actually do. And I'm like, because I know at one point in time they were talking about racism was when you're uh, uh, against someone's nationality, mm-hmm. like their actual race. Then they took it to their uh, basically their religion to include other people in there for racism. And I'm like, no, is that actual racism now? And then I'm like, I look it up in the dictionary. It's in there. I'm like, but 10 years ago, I know for a fact this was not in the dictionary. Well, you know that at one point they put bootylicious in the dictionary. So yeah. I knew they could change it. And bling bling. <laughs> yeah. bling the bling bling should be in the dick. <laughs> that's that's a word with a good feel. I just like saying bling bling. But, you know what but here's my definition of a toxic trait: is that I know something that pisses you off, and I'm gonna do it anyway, and I'm doing it to piss you off. Right. That's the toxic trait. So it can be something small, something big. But if I know that you don't like to be called big country, okay, 
and I can hear every day. What up, big country? Awesome. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm more, I'm, I'm in line with him. And to add on to that, I'm more of a excess. Like, because like an earlier episode I said, if you drink too much water, the water will be toxic. Like, you can be poisoned by water. You can yeah. be. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So, water in its in, in appropriate quantities is okay. A girl going on a date every now and then for the free meal, I don't really feel like that's a toxic trait. It's like, look, I went on 10 dates this week. I deserve, I, I gave nine dudes a quality conversation and they just didn't prove to be nothing. So when I call number nine back to get the free steak, it's like, I earned it because I put a lot of work in on the date we was in. Like, you know what I'm saying? I deserve <laughs> a real uh, meal because, you know, I don't I know about that, but I don't know. I'm just saying. But I'm saying it's excessive to expect this woman to come out here on 10 different days and have a trash time, and you're not good at the conversation. You have But what if you were good at the conversation, but she still wants you the free food? You. Well, then at that point, you still. Some people are not connected. Like, you can go on a date, have a perfect conversation, but y'all just don't connect on that level. Okay. Yes. It's, on and it's okay. Yeah. And, that, and you look too much like a brother. Dude, why would you even go out with the dude if you look too much like your brother? Every guy, you everybody you deserve a fair shot. You might not have known it until you got there. Yeah. There's that's, that's been times where you've seen a woman like, hey, I don't know, like, maybe it'll work out. Let's just see where it goes. It's the same difference. Like, they like, maybe, maybe the conversation, I may look in different. Well, I mean, you know You might say the right so, thing. So we got to think about it. I'm, I'm going to say this. Everybody's not just as straightforward as you are. So, see, this, this is the thing. He is one of those people that I shoot he, straight from the hip. He, 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 he ain't gonna give nobody the benefit of the doubt. He gonna just go straight at it like this. And that's how he thinks. Us, maybe, <laughs> us three, we'll probably be like, eh, maybe it may work, it may not. Yeah. We'll we'll try. But him, no. <laughs> <laughs> your show on. They all buy your product. 
until they stop buying your product. It's not a guarantee. Your job guaranteed. It don't matter if they had a poor week, a poor month, a poor sales period, a terrible quarter. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. You showed up, you did eight hours, I got to pay you for that. Right. I got to figure out the rest on the back end for me. But as long as you came and did your part, my expectations for me, I hope that our business can keep going. Yeah. So that's why it's more toxic if you give me hope, but don't give me what I need. Like, I'm hoping and I'm, I lean on you heavily, but I can't really get it. Like, you say hi to me. Why you keep asking me how I'm feeling when you know I feel like trash? Because I can never be the girl for the relationship. I'm just the booty call. But if she came <laughs> over here, if she came over here understanding full well, this ain't going to be your entrepreneur. You're not going to live out your dreams here. You're living out mine. But you are compensated well because, like he said, I'm the prize. <laughs> yes. you you going to be able to spend a full hour with me, including dinner, conversation, maybe a movie. But at the end, you going to go home and you won't have me. There's no hope, so there's no despair. <laughs> it's all knowns. Everything is known. It's mapped out. You can plan your life on that. You're not yeah. going to win in this case. Right. Okay. You ain't going to win, but you're not going to lose. Yeah. You're going to come in and leave with what you can. So you're saying I'm toxic. It's mm -hmm. a toxic trait. We were it, toxic back then. We were toxic. We're, it it we're is not... what it is. If I told you, yeah, I don't share my bed. I don't, uh, like, no, I don't do those things. If you I don't, don't share okay. your bed and nobody ever slept in that bed, one thing. But if somebody has got there, it's, like, it's, it's holding up a light in a dark place. It's like, so, I got to get to the light. Prime example, letting them come over there was, it, it was a hope. It was a <laughs> <laughs> no. So let, let's, let's do this in a, a, a job scene. Okay. If, if I'm your manager or whatever, and I say, hey, you may get a, you may get a, may get a promotion. Some, someday. But everybody else gets a promotion but you. Mm -hmm. I'm going maybe. You don't. But the female did. But but I'm saying you don't go off of maybes. However, why don't you go off maybes? Because I don't trust other people. The but same the female way. is trusting you. If I told, and see, see, see we keep going that, back that, to that, the same thing. But see that that's why I, that was my point to what I said. <laughs> we may be like, eh, yeah, you don't you you, but, you deal in. But hold on, but this, this, yeah. this is what I'm this is what I'm saying is that you don't deal in maybes. But when you say. I'm not looking for a relationship right now. That's that a is maybe. a maybe. That's a maybe. That's not a. That's not. A, that's, that's not a concrete. The right that's now, not a definite. That, the that right, right now, now was a maybe. It's like in due time. It's just like I'm, I'm not. Sorry, to keep I'm, not this I'm not looking for a sales manager right now. But it it's not. Well, it, 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 no, no, because if, if we look at it like that, a sales manager. If they say, "Well, we're not really." Hiring or looking for a sales manager. Obviously, I'm gonna go to a place where they're looking for a sales manager. Okay, I'm but not gonna hope. Oh, maybe no, one day. But you, you, this is him. You. So <laughs> let's take this into consideration. Sales at this particular company, because we gotta keep in mind that there are calibers of men, or calibers of men that you like and you don't like. Women. So we okay. Can, let's switch up to women because it's a room for men. It's <laughs> 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 calibers of women that you you know. Hey, there's a difference between talking to a, a, a Lizzo and a Beyonce. No, knock to Lizzo. I'm, I'm sorry, I knock Lizzo. It is She's what it is. I'm not going to do that. But but there is a distinct difference between talking to two to, to, to women. Yes. Yeah. So, granted, the sales manager position for a, a Lizzo may just be a, you know, hey, you're really getting your fifteen dollars an hour, but you got the title. You sales manager, but you getting fifteen dollars an hour. Working just regular sales for Beyonce guarantees you twenty bucks. So you really finna jump back and take the fifteen just to have the title, or you gonna go and host it? If 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 just being in sales guarantees me twenty bucks, if they ever do open up that sales manager spot, so I'm gonna get X Y Z. That's I'm, why it's I'm not. Be, I'm gonna be honest. Gonna if we're gonna be real. If I'm not even in sales right now, I'm trying to get into sales. Hey, Lizzo, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna work for you, but I'm gonna let you know if Beyonce open up uh, sales, 
I'm going to be no, on sales level. No. That's what I'm saying. Sales already open over there. Sales manager on her side ain't open. But sales manager open on Lizzo's side. But it's me. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. No. It's open on this side. So you can take this $5 pay cut right now and have the title. Or you can sit in the rafters and the bleachers, but you're still putting in work. And then you say there's an opportunity for a sales manager position in the future, which automatically, you know, has to pay more than just regular sales. See, but I'm, uh, yeah. I'm a, uh, let me make this point. So back when I first graduated, couldn't find a job in my field. And so I was like, you know what? I'm working at this, this company and I, I'm going to work hard and show them like, hey, I can be in the field I want to be in. Mm-hmm. I've gotten told from like three or four different managers that, hey, you can't do this, but you can do that. But they said, and maybe once you do that, you can get to the, the level you want to be, which was finance. Mm-hmm. So they always have that that dangling carrot of you can you can get to finance, you just gotta go around some, some, and, some hurdles. And saying that, I never got to get to finance with that company. Mm-hmm. I had to leave that company and go to someone that's like, hey. This is a finance position. This is yours. And so if the first company would have been like, hey, you can't get the finance with us. I would have known like, okay, cool. It's time for me to move somewhere else. Right. But since they told me there could be an opportunity, I had that hope and I stayed around mm-hmm. for way longer than I needed to. That worked. And I understand what you're saying. But as you said, you knew from the get-go, oh, well, you were, uh, if they would have told you from the get-go, you wouldn't have made it to sale or uh, finance at that point in time. You would have been gone from there. Mm-hmm. I'm the type of person is like, if I know that this is not what I want, you know what? Okay. I'm going to start searching for something. But my mom and my dad always instilled in me, you never leave one job till you got another job. So I'm going to use this job until I get there, and then yeah. I'm gonna move there. But I'm not. Uh, this, I'm not about is, to wait. This is where that toxic yeah. comes in. When, now, granted, we talking. You talking about a job, look, but when you start dealing with people, jobs don't have feelings, bro. It's it's, it's a clock. It's a machine. Mm-hmm. You not hear somebody is. If you not hear your feelings hurt, it worked. No, uh, not at work, but just uh, uh, in a relationship in life. Yeah. Right? Okay. Have you ever had your feelings hurt? My wife actually hurt my feelings. Okay. <laughs> Have you had your feelings hurt? Yeah, the same Okay. Same so, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And mine just hurt my feelings. It's the fact that I'm like, bruh, everybody's going to have their feelings hurt. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Nobody goes through any relationship and has never had their feelings hurt. Nobody. Mm-hmm. True. Like, Somebody's let you down, somebody's hurt you, all that other kind of stuff. But you still have to adapt and move forward. The thing about it is, what I'm trying to get to, you said everybody gets hurt. The level of investment is different. Your wife hurt your feelings, the investment so high, that little transgression you had, I'm not going to distance myself or dismiss you. You somebody who really trying to get some job, like I'm really trying to get to that position, and they tell you, after you given 10 years of service and quality service based around the idea that when that position comes open, I'll be the candidate because I've put in so much work and you see my work ethic. Yeah. That's the hope. Mm-hmm. Then they open it up and then they give it to somebody who, mm-hmm. and you like, you just walked in the door. Just walked in the door. you like, wait, did the 10 years that I put in mean nothing? I did without dealing with you when I could have went and did what I wanted to do was something like I could have. You lying to flip it. And up. that's why I, even <laughs> to this day, I realized that, like when I was younger and even now, I realized that same thing because I'm like, I know at some point in time this job position could be open or closed. Right. But obviously, if I'm not getting what I want here, okay, I need to move over here. Yeah. Because, and that's the whole thing I'm saying. So, We've gotten off track a little bit, so let's get back to these toxic, toxic. traits <laughs> instead of my toxic trait. I'm not talking about your but toxic. I'm just talking about it in general. I ain't never really feel like it was just. One, uh, I guess, yeah. I guess one of the things I look at is when I think about toxic traits is when you are literally 
knowing what you're doing is wrong or you're using it to your benefit, but then you still keep on, it's like, it's like, okay, for example, like I've heard people talk about, oh, fathers being in the home. And, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, men aren't in the home. But then I'm like, it's been dispelled that that's not true, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to black fathers. Black fathers are in the house more than any other race. Right. So, but yet you still hear people try to push that same narrative, knowing that you know the truth now, that black fathers are in the house. But if it's your narrative... So you're going to keep pushing, oh, well, oh, black fathers aren't in the house. Black fathers are not taking care of their children. Like, I was talking back and forth with one of my friends about it because she, uh, because the uh, Umar Johnson thing, uh, when he was talking about, oh, boys are being suffocated by a lot of femininity, and it's like they do need more masculine men, more masculine teachers, more masculine people in general, just so uh, so they could get both sides of the coin. Now, she was like, well, men need to step up. And I was like, I understand men, there are men that need to step up. But then it's also like, it's two sides to that. It's like, are you going to let that person step up? Yeah. Because you can say all day men are trash, but if you're not, if all men are trash, it's you. It's not, you can't say, uh, like, that's like me right now. I could never say all women are trash. I don't even think half women are trash. I think there's a lot of great women out here. I give them their props, but I know that a lot of them do not get the recognition that the trash ones get. But I still see it out here. So it's almost like you keep on pushing that same narrative out there instead of the truth. Recognize what you do have and stop taking it for granted. And what you got to do is surround yourself with the right people. Because you're attracting these trash people because you're around trash people. Once you get to people who are doing something for themselves, you're going to start attracting people who are doing something for themselves. I dig that. I think that's a good point. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're jumping into the segment called You Won't Believe This. And You Won't Believe This is brought to you by. As always, love to shout out my beautiful wife. Love you, baby. Uh, check out her pages. Traces Like Mine, Yanni Like Mine, and Wasted Desires. Traces Like Mine, hair care product for black women, by black women. They is trying to help black women with their hair. You know, black women, y'all say that uh, there's not a lot of things out here. Here is the product that is for you. Then we have Yanni like mine. Ladies, if you don't know what your Yanni is, look it up. It does not clean itself no matter what anybody tells you. And now, Wasted Desires. Wasted Desires, you can go wasteddesires.com. They have thigh chains, bracelets, anklets, waist beads, all those uh, sexy things that your man will love on you too. Did, did they get the bridesmaid garter? Yes, yes, they have it. Tell um, them. Oh my God. That's what I'm Anyways, <laughs> but y'all check them out. They're on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, and go to wasteddesires.com. All right, Tyler Nash. So, Tyler Bailey, luxury clothes by luxury guys. You can look them up by. TylerBailey.com. He makes clothes. Loves your clothes, by the way. Also, D Mac, he's a barber. My cousin Mike, he does SOB. No, it is not what you're thinking. It is called State of Being. Right? So, State of Being is a podcast where he's talking about, you know, at this point right now, he's talking about bettering the earth, taking care of your communities, taking care of the kids in your community, taking care of the people in your community. So, really go with it. If you support, if you support your neighborhood in any way, you know what I'm saying? He might influence you to do a cleaning drive or influence you to, you know, go and update your local park or something. He he on that wave right now. So go check that out. Uh also most like the people I really want to shout out is us. Something the number four DAP. 
people. Yes, that is something, the number four DA people. If you are on YouTube, go ahead and put podcast at the end of all that. That'll minimize some of those search results. If you are on there, like, share, subscribe. If you're going to give a, a review in reference to stars, five stars on it, you know, I would prefer that. If you got to do some, you know, below that, just find somebody else to go kick it with. It's cool. I'm not upset. Do what you love because we do what we love. We want people who love what we do to be around us, right? You know what I'm saying? Quality people with quality people. And if your quality is a little different than ours, it's going to be that. Uh, I'm going to shoot it over to you. Like, want to shout out? Shout out my boy, Brian Slaughter, because for work. Uh, also, I want to shout out my boy, DA Fit Legit, June 18th. And doing a live session. Uh, hit him up on Instagram under Fit Legit. Also, fan base. Drop the ball on the fan base once again. Head over to fan base, man. Run those numbers up over there. We're trying to throw that over there. Uh, again, like, subscribe, share, share, and more share. Over there. Got a nice I'm going to be behind it right over there. Anybody want to show some love to? I always got to show love to my family and my wife, kids, uh, everybody. And as an organization, I would say, um, Kids play basketball in kind of the Frisco, Little Elm area. Kings and Queens organization. Amazing people to have basketball, volleyball, soccer, and I think they're doing baseball and softball now. So take them, give them a look. Great organization. So let's jump into it. Recently, Azalea Banks makes some disrespectful comments towards DC Young Fly's deceased. Wife Jackie O. Uh, so Zaya Banks went on the Wild and Out show, knowing the premise of the show, and DC Young Fly said you can't get Cardi B, so you got Zaya Banks and referred to her as ugly. But also keep in mind, this is Wild and Out. Yeah. That's what he does. That's controversy, fun, fan, you know, making fun of people. That's literally the premise of the show. She took offense. She had something to say. His wife goes in for what they say at the time was a cosmetic procedure. I'm not 100% sure on what took place, but she ends up passing away due to complications with that from what they tell me. And the day that she died was apparently Azalea Banks' 32nd birthday. And she wants to attribute that woman's passing to the fact that he said what he said and you shouldn't mess with her in that way. Bad things can happen to those people. I personally don't agree with that in any way, shape, or fashion because, you know, hey, you came to my job knowing full well what we do at my job, mm -hmm. and it's not a personal attack. It's me just making a paycheck to feed the family that I care about. You did not have to come here. We would never have had to have that interaction. And Put yourself in that position where you're gonna say something crazy like that, especially about somebody like his wife. Right. That's a violation. That right there, I would consider a toxic trait. Very toxic. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it like this. First of all, shout out to DC Young Fly. My condolences on your wife and her passing. I wish y'all all the best, and I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Now, to Zellie Banks, my thing is the disrespect that comes out of your mouth. Like, I've had people that have an issue with me, and to the day they died, they had an issue with me. I don't speak ill on those people because I don't speak ill on the dead for one. If I had an issue with you, I'm going to bring it up to your face. But after, like... For you to do that is very disrespectful. I don't care if you were playing, if you were trying to uh, trying to be funny, whatever. But I'm like, like I ain't gonna lie, and like I'm petty like that. I'll send a cousin or two over. And, hey, I, I'm gonna need you to get that one. Sometimes, like, sometimes like I just have to do my, my wife dying. Don't do yeah. that to my like. Have to set, especially in the entertainment industry, you gotta separate the family from what I do. Yeah. Granted, it's very hard for fans and supporters yeah. to do that, but the truth is, 
Andre three stacks said it. Look, my privacy is my privacy. The same way you want to go sit down at a restaurant and eat your meal and nobody have nothing to say to you, I want to do that too. If I'm in mourning, I want to just mourn. I don't one. I granted we talking about it now, but the fact that. My wife passed away and we throw that all up in the tabloids and everybody all in my business. Not everybody got to have something to say yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. That's one thing. And as an entertainer, I'm sure DC Young Fly accepted that because he knows majority of the responses coming back, if not all of them, except for this one crazed lady, it's going to be, I'm sorry to happen, because especially in those times, you need a lot of support. Mm-hmm. You want people to, yeah, yeah. yeah, I understand you feel my pain and you feel sorry for me and you don't want that for you, right? Yeah. Then you come back and you get this one lady who had a disagreement about something I said in a jovial manner. It's a gist. It's like we own a show where I talk crazy to people. Mm-hmm. That's my job. You see me do this. You see me do it. You see me do it to countless other people and you still signed up. You the lady who sat in line at Six Flags to get on the Superman and got mad when it dropped. Everything was good on the way up, but the second it dropped, you got scared and you feel like you want your money back for the entire park experience. Mm-hmm. You saw countless people proud of you go up and come down. Yeah. What did you think was going to happen to you? Yeah. She well, was the exception. You, to you the exception. Nah, you can look at the analogy. You know, they got them slap things on uh, on social media now where people getting slapped in the face hard and they got competition about it. Right. You knew you grinned and slapped if you came on here. Yeah, you knew yeah. for a fact. There, there wasn't no, oh, maybe I would, maybe. No, you know you getting yeah, slapped. Getting slapped. Now, all of a sudden, you got slapped like everybody else got mm-hmm. slapped. Now you mad and you want to fight now. Yeah, so, you got slapped and they had a glass jaw and got mad because it got broke. This, you shouldn't have been on here. And this is the problem that I see. I, I really don't know who Banks is, but it's about the straight work. Is that you went to the comedy show. Pretty much in the front, front row right now because mm-hmm. the jokes don't come to you. Right. People laugh too hard at the joke. Now you feel some type of way. Some type of way. Yeah. Because it's all going to come to me like, hey, you ugly. I'm like, all right, whatever. Right. But if like hundreds of people are laughing, I'm like, dang, did y'all me a bunch of people? Like, that ugly dog? Like, that looking at me. But I, the, the I, thing I, is, is that they tell you in. in I guess, and when you have some beef with somebody, wife and kids are not yeah, all. Yeah, that's all. You, right. if you had a problem with DC, come go to him. Mm-hmm. Throw jokes at him every day, all day. Yeah. But don't don't bring the wife in when the wife can't fight back. Hey, look at it like this: DC Young Fly is not the. I, from what women have told me, he's not the best looking dude. He wouldn't have tripped about you saying something about him. But you said something about my wife. Yeah. Not the only my, my wife, kids. the mother of my three kids, not only the mother of my three kids, my whole world that has just gotten shattered. Mm-hmm. I'm like, like, why would you go there? It's like, you asking for this drama and you think it shouldn't come to you. She talking about karma. Like, that's not karma. Oh, I talked about you now uh, on a show. I talked about you on the show. In the setting. And now, oh, my wife's dead because I talked about you on this show? Yeah. Man, that's not how karma works. I I would even go so far to say, even if you did feel that way, maybe you sitting in your house casting voodoo spells, right? Don't know, don't know you from a can of paint. Let's be honest. Let's be straight. If you felt that way and kept that to yourself and moved on with your life, I wouldn't be here discussing you. It don't matter. She might have did that and that happened and it is what it is, but you ain't going to tell me that you finna come and put that in that man's face Mm -hmm. and not expect people to come back and tell you that, no, that's a violation. Especially when you haven't done it like countless number of times before. Right. You you waited to this point like, oh yeah, let let me air out this beef now. He had um, he had movies that didn't do the box office numbers. He had he had many instances where stuff ain't go mm-hmm. right. Granted, mm-hmm. he had a lot more instances where stuff did go right, but you could have attacked him on. That's why your movie was trash. Cool. She didn't want that. Yeah. yeah. That, she wanted she wanted the one of the biggest public moments where it were hurtful ones. Right. That's what she wanted. Hurt people, hurt people. She wanted to cut deep. Yeah. Because 
on one of the biggest moments in front of the world, it hurt her. Right. In her mind. Because you got to think about it. You know, I'm, I'm not justifying what she did by no means. Mm. I'm not justifying. Mm. But in people's mind, when on the public stage, when I'm embarrassed and I'm hurt the most in front of the world, now I'm going to get you and cut you deeper. Yeah. In front of but the whole world. But you asked for this. I, I'm not, I, uh, like I'm saying, I'm not justifying nothing she did. But what I'm saying is, is she picked a moment where this man is the most vulnerable, the most hurt. And it's like, nah, I got you. Yeah, just like back in college, people, mm -hmm. they hurt somebody, they want to top it. Like, I'm going to cut you deeper. Yeah, <laughs> now, I got, now I got you. Now I got you right where I want you. I ain't said nothing this whole time. But now, nah, bitch has been sitting back and waiting. And this is her version of now nah, karma done came and got you. Yes. But that is it's, not, it's, right. It's, it's, it's not right. It's not right. It's 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 borderline insanity. If we really think about it, it's not right. It's ne it's never right to play on anybody's death. Yes. Whatsoever. Right. Let's not I, I, don't, I don't want nobody to misconstrue what I'm what I'm talking about. It's just that she waited. When this man ain't ain't gonna respond, ain't gonna have nothing to say because at this point in time, you ain't nowhere near my concern. Mm -hmm. You are nowhere near my concern. I'm worried about my, my kids, my children. I'm worried about my daughter. I'm worried about my daughter, and I'm worried about my six month old son. Right. Yeah. I'm worried about my kids. I ain't worried about me either at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about what's gonna happen next. You last a little bit of my concern. Right. And I hope, like, now that I'm older, is that if I'm DC and I'm in the shoes, I'm just going to try to ignore it. Like, it's not even going to be a, you come back on the show and I'm going to really rip into you. It's, I don't hey, think, you say what you say. Go, 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 go on. I don't think he going to, I don't think he going to pay no attention. I, 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 I hope he don't. I don't I think he, I, yeah. I hope he don't, but you know, as well as I do. There's parts of him that wants to, but I don't think it's like, I don't think oh, it's oh, yeah. Every, like, every bone in my body but you ready. Like, you listen think about it. Right now, the only reason we even speaking about her is in relation to this. So if he did respond, he'd be putting light on her. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a negative light, mm -hmm. the response is going to drive people to go. So I'd be like, no. Sometimes don't get a, don't get a fire of air. Starve it out. Let it mm -hmm. just, you, you thought you had a spark, you ain't gonna make a flame, though. No. We just gonna mm -hmm. let that die. Yeah, yeah. Don't get, and don't get me wrong, I do understand that. But I, I'm not there yet. I, I, I'm working on being there because I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's certain lines I do not cross because I know how I am when if somebody crossed that line on me. Right. My family is off limits. I'm like, we can crack all the jokes you want. We can say whatever. You can say whatever you want about me. Mm -hmm. But my family and on the tragedy of my family, I have no problem coming to see you or having somebody else come see you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm like, look at it like this. We are all married in here. And I believe all of us love our wives to death. Without question. Now... Somebody, like, God forbid something happen, and somebody say something, you ain't in the right mind state. It's like, bruh, this World War Three hit. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, nah. I can't like, say Like, I don't believe in hitting women. But I'm like, at that point in time, if I heard in the news, DC caught Azalea Banks with a two-piece, I'm going to be like. Yeah, that's all. And that's, I guess, my point is that in the moment, yes, I'm, I'm World War Three, but I I have to keep it together because yes. the perspective of it is that yeah you're going off, but now oh he did this he did that now I'm in jail now I have a wife that's passed away my kids father's in jail now everything's in everything jail. becomes a worse situation but yes you, and don't get me wrong I understand exactly what you're talking yeah. about because you got a wifey. I mean, you got kids you got to look after. You got to make sure they're okay. But I'm like, you know, when, especially, this is the love of your life. This is your, yeah. your person. You said, hey, it's me and you against everything else. That's why I'm like, I'm passionate about it. Yeah. And I'm like, bruh, like, the certain levels, 
certain levels you don't cross. Yeah. Certain things you just don't sometimes. do. And then, and it's good that I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably got a good circle of people around mm-hmm. him too. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, it, feed into the you know, just it, you gotta have that surrounding good. Like he said previously, you gotta surround yourself around good people, and those mm-hmm. people are probably just huddled around him, mm-hmm. nurturing on him. Like, look, man, you know, we gonna we gonna be here for you. You know, whatever you need. We just gonna keep it going, you know. It's, I know it's not a good time, but we just gotta keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and there's a power to, to, to silence because I know it's worked on me countless times where you just going in on a person, they don't say nothing, you get pissed, like you get more pissed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like, oh, you ain't gonna say nothing, like you better mm-hmm. say something. Because I think the only thing that he has actually said is been regarding to his wife. Yeah, like he he mm-hmm. posted something about her. Other mm-hmm. than that, he's made no no comments whatsoever. So, like, yeah. you know, he's doing the right thing, man. Just keep on, keep it moving, keep it moving for your family, and keep it moving for yourself as well. Like, yeah. You know, don't don't get his no attention because, man, you this it ain't work. It's not worth it at the end of the day. It ain't worth it. So we're going into the final segment. Just so you know. Do people really understand racism, reverse racism, and the effects they play on the culture? Like, like I have thought about this, and there's so many different ways. I hear so many people say certain things and spew out the same rhetoric, even though some things I could get behind, some things I can't. Like, when the, uh, them saying that black people themselves can't be racist. Well, first of all, reverse racism. There's no such thing. It's racism. It's not reverse. Ra- uh, like, it's like, it's stupid. It's like racism is racism. Yeah. No matter who it is. There's no such thing as reverse racism. It's like black people don't got a claim on being the only ones that have been, uh, people have been racist too. Don't get me wrong, we have a messed up claim. We talk about it a lot. But I'm like, there are a lot of different other races and things that there have been issues with because of their race. But reverse racism is not a thing. Now, when we talk about racism itself, like, does anybody know the true actual definition for racism? For Treat me like a five-year-old. I do not. What is it? Like, no, no, no. We're going to look this oh, up. I, uh, yeah. Now, you so don't understand we had a conversation earlier. Uh, and that's right. what I'm saying. Right. Racism. I'm going to switch it up on you to, you know. You got to go back to 10 years. Yeah, you got to go back <laughs> to when they wrote it. You know. Yeah. Who now, wrote it? When Webster probably put the initial definition of racism in there, it might have been a whole lot different. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, racism. Prejudice, discrimination, antagonism by an individual, community, or institution against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group, typically one that is a minority or marginalized group. So you notice that that changed from what it used to be because it was like you uh, had to have the power. Yeah, you gotta have power. Uh, well, I mean, uh, or, in order to discriminate, you would. I would hope that you had something that other people wanted, which when you have something that other people want and you don't give it to them, you have the power to distribute. Yeah, but But nowadays, everybody has that same power. If you're a manager at your job, and let's say you're the hiring manager, and you don't want to hire certain people, whether you black, Mexican, Asian, Jamaican, or whatever, Mm -hmm. you have power now. But a lot of the, the, I guess more open racist people like say now or 10 15 years ago has been like the country people they didn't have any power but they're the, the most racist yeah. the most openly racist and yeah. i'll even go as far as to say that a openly racist person i can deal with a closet yes. racist is hard yeah. if i know how to deal with it, like if i know you don't want me over here i'm just not gonna go over there i won't yeah. just that's your space you let me know what it is. I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's better be... to deal with the enemy that you know than the yep. one that you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't want to I don't want to cross any un, un imaginary line. I didn't know it was there. How did I violate you? I never knew you felt that way. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that was a, a, like David Banner um said this one thing. He was like, the reason I could respect Mississippi because of the uh, if they don't like you, they're gonna let you know up front. I oh, don't sure. mess with you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, versus yeah, yeah. what we do in a lot of these places now, oh, we'll just act like, oh yeah, you're, oh we're cool. I got my right. friends. It's like, like no. I, I'm gonna I'm say this, man. If, if you live in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Atlanta, or in Georgia, or Georgia, that's terrible. You, <laughs> you pretty much know if they like you, if they don't like you. And that's the thing <laughs> is. I would rather you tell My grandmother is from Mississippi, and she will let you know in 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Hey, no. I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just that easy. It's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's pretty much it. Like, my family is one side is from Louisiana and the other side is from Mississippi, and it was never no question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's no, the yeah. thing is, never like, no I wish that we would just be straight up and honest about it. So it's like, I know how to deal with you. Uh, oh, okay. I shouldn't come to this company because I know they don't want me at this company. I'll be like, okay, cool. Well, I don't got to go to that company. I feel like some people just don't know the definition. Of, they don't know how to, the difference between being racist and prejudiced. Yeah. yeah. Like, they don't, they don't know the difference. So my question would be, you know how we always, well, not we, but people within our racial demographic always go around stating that they get the black part, they get the they get the pass. They get the you know what I'm saying. Nobody yeah. should get a pass. Mm-hmm. But see, the fact that people have thrown up the idea that I can give you a pass to disrespect my people, right? Because yeah. it's always based on, you know, being able to do something that most black people would consider, you know, disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I won't let you do that disrespectful act unless I give you a pass and then that gets you in the so you created a false sense of power mm-hmm. and then administered it based yeah. on, hey, you don't look like me, so you can't say it. But that was just like when your dad was talking yesterday. It was mm-hmm. like how and I work on it now. I try to sometimes I mess up and say the N word. But I'm like, nobody should be saying it. Because the fact that man, there's a lot of older people that sit here and like, hey, I ain't your N word. No, like, it, it, you gonna watch your mouth around me? Not yeah, not I was like, cause I, I made sure maybe it's about 10, 10, 12 years now where I just N word. I, I just won't say it. What? I, I'm not giving you burn. I'm gonna be honest. You know, the culture I grew up in, being from the West Coast, it's it was kind of like something that was ingrained in us. Yeah, yeah. you know. NWA and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so it's kind of hard. It's, I'm, I'm working on it like you. Mm-hmm. I'm working on trying to pull yeah, it out of me. Yeah. It, it's hard. Like, so like, mm-hmm. When I first tried it, it's, it's like saying simple. that word was like saying y'all in Texas. It, it was, <laughs> 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 and don't let somebody piss you off because the first thing you're going to say, <laughs> put it in place so that's why I, I, I constantly say young greatness and mm-hmm. greatness because I'm like I want you to understand I see you in a positive light if I'm talking to you mm-hmm. one that's a that's a really big step up because <laughs> I really wasn't taking it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so the fact that we having a conversation you've done something that you should consider great so young greatness uh, or greatness or whatever it may be but I'm trying to give you statements and, and things that uh evolve you like yeah, I am somebody, but I ain't gonna try to degrade you to have a conversation with you. If you wanna mm-hmm. talk to me, it's gonna be a positive experience. But, right. like, no, like I said, I'm not in power. Like, sometimes. Ra- er, um, <laughs> racism is one thing that I wish that everyone would actually just go on and talk about so we could just get it out in the open, in the air, and get it done. Because, okay, no, nah, look at it like this. Because we, um, America is what around four hundred plus uh, four hundred plus years right now. We're in, uh, it's ingrained in us now, but everybody's trying to sweep it under the rug. And it's still been going on the same thing. Just still been going, and everybody's like, no. Then they get into the reparations thing. Then they get into all this other stuff. I'm 
I'm like, bro, let's just go and get this stuff. They don't do that. But man. And this is another problem is that I think we're all black. Mm-hmm. Is that we feel that we're entitled to stuff to be able to say things because oh well, they said we were the n words for this long. I can be openly racist to other people. Like with Charlemagne, when he does Dunkin' Day, he does like hopefully just not a talk of uh, whatever word it is. He says cracker ass crack. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now we can call people like hey play basketball. I got the white boy. But that, that's racist that's because, that's because that's a white person I got the black guy. They will look at you like yeah. some type of way. One, yeah, if you're on the basketball court, I'm gonna be like, so who you guarding again? You know what yeah. I'm saying? No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you ain't saying nothing. So one uh, one thing, like saying cracker is not racist. But say, it could be, say, hold up, hold up, hold up. Real quick. So go, go, no, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So the word cracker was never to um be administered toward white people. The cracker was the person that cracked the whip. On the slaves, which they had, uh, uh, there were black people and white people that did that. So it was like, crack, that's what cracker is. A lot of people were like, oh, it's saltines, oh, it's all this stuff because, you know, when white people get mm-hmm. wet and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But that is what actual cracker means. Well, what is the technical definition of the N word? The technical definition of the N word uh, originally was denigrating. African American because the N word was actually derived from Negro mm-hmm. and Negro, which is Spanish for black. Mm-hmm. And then it went to, oh well, we're gonna use this word, we're gonna change it up a little bit to an ignorant black person. Well, I'm not ignorant. Okay. So I know for a fact that's not even me. Like I'm very educated. I understand too many different levels of things for you to think. Of me is that. So both of these terms have, have evolved into yes. derogatory terms, correct? Yes. So they but they're both have evolved into terms that they weren't originally. Yeah, used. it's just like what, like yeah. So that, so little people, we used to say a different word, and yeah. now I've learned that you can't call you them can't that. call them that. Yeah, they want to be referred to as, as little people. people. But it's crazy, almost because I know a couple of little people, and they were like. I don't care. But there's there's people that says you can call me the N word. Right. They're giving you a pass. Yeah. yeah. And just like you saying that that cracker is not racist, to some people it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, but my thing is it's just <laughs> like I won't be called the N word, so I'm not gonna call a person like a cracker or yeah. I won't say the for a little person whatever word that I'm is. Just like or, if you call. Dude, if you call actually some, call somebody a cracker like really. Yeah. myself in situations. I always be like, I'm where you see me at. Where you see this me at somebody. <laughs> this is who I'm holding. <laughs> I got him. That yeah. person right here. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Because I'll be like, I might make reference to your shoes and that might be tied to your gang and they'd be like, oh, so he in opposition to only keeping the red shoes? Wow. <laughs> Look, bro, I just want to play no, ball. Man. You hold me. I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> That's usually what happens because the person we on we know we ain't on the same team. So we you guard me. Got me. I we got I got him. <laughs> but the whole idea is honestly, I wish people could be more honest and talk about things. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, we're going on all this time 
Nobody want to talk about it. Everybody try to sweep it on the rug. Then when somebody talk about it, somebody try to put a muzzle on them. Hey, hey, y'all need to be quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't uh, don't talk about it. Well, I got my own personal opinions about why people don't want to talk about it. You know, I can tell you why I don't want to talk about it. Because in my world, I, I think <clears throat> you talking to me, but the in the grand scheme of things, how you operate, you're not going to change for me. Like, when you're around me... A lot me, of people don't know. When you're around me, you're going to operate with a certain level of respect because I demand it. Not just demand it, but I give it. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you this level of respect. I demand that respect back. If I can't get that respect back, my first option is get out your way. My second option is to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Because I got a family and I got people I want to see me free, I'd rather just walk away. And you know what's really funny about it, like that now I'm thinking about it, is it's kind of like a, a relationship. Where when we sweep things under the rug, and when it blows up, it blows up big. Yeah. So now people don't want to have the conversation because it's, it's going to blow up big up. because it's been yeah. 40 years of us muzzling the topic. The mm -hmm. yeah. and but at some point, like, because, and I do agree with this one, no black person alive today has been a slave. Wait, it's not no, there's, a, there's a few that are still alive. It's, it's like this, it's okay, 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 in, in America, in America. Yeah. Well, it's a doc I'm gonna show you the documentary. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess I gotta watch it's this still, documentary. It's, it's, that, like, that the, actual... lady, the lady was saying, like, I didn't know he was written. They, they spoke to me as if they owned me. And they and it's huh? that's 2000s, bro. Huh? Blew my mind when so I saw you it. Watch, you ain't watch regular TV? Blew my mind when I saw it. Like, I was like, regular bro, TV? Oh, bro, he's free. The South, you don't see the man bro, on the TV? The South is different. The reason you celebrate Juneteenth is because you didn't get the information on time. A year! <laughs> Bruh, a year! <laughs> hey, bro! Yeah, hey. If they can hold it from you for a, for a year, and it's something that all y'all... Right. Withholding information. <laughs> Withholding <laughs> see, trace. Just First of all, my brother. There's no break. You know, what's the best way to, help, to keep somebody ignorant? There you go. You said just because, just because everybody don't have access to TV, everybody don't have access to radio, everybody can't read. Bro, if you walk you down, down the many, street, do you know how many, do you know how many people can't read? Literally, like, no, like this, this there is a are a lot of people that are grown, that are way older than us, that don't know how to read. Don't, period. Don't. So, um, I'm talking about the uh, was it the Allen shooting? Mm -hmm. oh. So we we kind of keep our kids sheltered, like. Stuff is on a need to know basis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went to the uh, Allen Outlet maybe a week ago, and we go into the Nike store. Went to go shop for shoes, and as we're leaving, they have a line outside with a security guard letting people in and out. And my son was like, "Man, it's like, why are they outside? Like, why couldn't they just come in?" And I was like, "There was a shooting. Why was there a shooting? Like, what happened?" And so now he didn't know. Anything about it, which I'm just thinking like it's, it's common knowledge. Everybody knows mm -hmm. it's, it's social media, but yeah. he didn't know because I did withhold that information from him. But I kept him in the dark about it. So yeah, because I don't want you yeah. to feel and don't get me wrong, like your life is in jeopardy going about shoes. Huh? Right. I just but when you old enough to inquire about, I don't want to hold it from because it is it is something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to put you in that position. Like. I mean, I, 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 like, don't get me wrong. For a child, I understand holding with, uh, holding information. But unless you ain't walk as an adult, like, if you didn't have a car, you know you walking. You're not gonna go like two miles without seeing a TV but or a, a radio or you see a black person over here with a, a nice car or something. But I'm like. Think about how much the government withholds information from us. And we're adults. Yeah. And we got we are high functioning adults. Yeah. We got people that don't know basic information. We got people that don't know how to write their own name. We got people yeah. that don't know how to don't know how to count to ten. We got people that don't know who they own social security numbers. Yeah. We got people that don't know how to fill out applications. We got people that don't know how to take care of themselves. They rely on government assistance. Okay. We have we have all those those people that live in ignorance. Okay, so they have to file taxes. So, and I, I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to kind of 
hit you with a turn on this one. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if we know that there's a, a ignorant people out here, mm-hmm. wouldn't it, uh, shouldn't we educate? Like, well, and before you say something, what I'm saying is because we, uh, us as black men, we know a lot about black history. Mm-hmm. But as white people, they do not know a lot about black history. And the reason I say that is because I have friends that I know I am, they are genuine. And if I call them right now, they pull up. Mm-hmm. Like, I know I genuinely have friends, but they don't know certain things because the educational system did not inform them of mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. They withheld uh-huh. information. Well, so now, as adults, they're like, oh, I did not know nothing about on um, Black Wall Street. That was just so just but just like it was just like how we had to learn certain stuff about their history that no, was that way it, it no, was no, no, always let, let, let me finish let me finish it, there's certain stuff that's in their history books that wasn't in that with certain stuff about their history that's not in books that we had to go learn outside of it okay the same way we had to go learn stuff outside of their books they can do the same no, but no. it just not you the, you re- you realize that us the, uh, like the reason we went and learned their stuff is because we like hold up we started learning our stuff and I'm like um y'all bullcrapping because the refrigerator the light uh, opposed the um all these things we kept on doing we built um the three musketeers which I don't know one white person in the world that don't know that that book that novel the movies and uh, all that other stuff was written by a black man but I'm like we start realizing. That hold up, we've been doing more. So hold up, what did they go do? So that's why we start learning their history more outside of it. Mm-hmm. For them, since they were told this is what they did, they were just like, yeah, but see, we were told that this was their history this, too. This, this, I think we did a bad job, and I'm talking about our generation, is that things get passed down from generation to generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are privilege to have like the social media technology to find information we didn't do a good enough job going back to our like grandmothers our mothers yeah. aunts and uncles to find out that history i'm still finding out things about my family now and i'm 35 and yeah. so i'm like man i didn't know that i didn't know this was happening but we didn't do a good job of passing that down whereas like my wife she is Hispanic and she can tell me a lot of things that's happening mm-hmm. in the Hispanic culture mm-hmm. because it is passed down from generations it's very factual no, I, I'm You're like I, I, I know because I have his, I have Hispanic friends. Mm-hmm. So, and I have Hispanic culture. I mean, like they know they great great grandma. Yeah, like they mm-hmm. they believe in that. Yeah, because a lot of them they have lineages that they can track. Mm-hmm. We don't have the story. True. We don't have those things that we can track as far as back as we can go. Sometimes is our uncle moved from Mississippi. And moved to California because of an opportunity to work at a a, a, a a factory, and that's the beginning of our family history. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's as far as we go. But a lot of them, they can track their ancestry all the way back to Spain. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's 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 a vast difference. You know what I'm saying? So as far as like with with history, I'm obsessed with old English history. I'm obsessed. Like, I, I love going to back and reading about it. I watch documentaries about it all the time. King, George, and all the whole night. I, I love all of it. Mm-hmm. So, I wanted to learn about it. Yeah. A lot of the, in, the in-depth the in parts of that history, all of that is not in books. Yeah, and that's true. Just like, <laughs> even now in day, <laughs> I was messing with his wife, the, uh, um... When we went over Rich House, and I'm like, it's funny how many people don't realize most Hispanic, Mexican, Latino people do not celebrate Cinco de Mayo yeah. unless it's one of those, yeah. oh, man, you here, I'm here. Hey, we got the day off. Let's drink. That, but, that is the only reason they... I, yeah, I, I, I know that. It was a lady, she told me, oh, you talking about the Corona Day? Like Corona holiday, because he's like, that's a marketing play. That's the only reason. Yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah, and I, I was like, I never knew. She's like, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> it's, but that's, it's not. It's not really a thing for them. Like, it, yeah. it, it's prominent. It was prominent. It was prominent in California. Mm-hmm. It's 
prominent in Texas because it's a marketing ploy. Yeah. yeah. Like those are really like, and if you don't know that, it's because you're not really just mm -hmm. like, trying to learn anything. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, <laughs> and this and that's the whole reason why I tell a lot of people. Learning different cultures is actually great. Yeah. It's actually because I can speak with a lot of like uh, Dia de Mortos, uh, um, like I was uh, talking to a lot of different people about it. I'm like, oh, understanding more about it instead of you just thinking, oh, it's skeletons and oh, people yeah, are sleeping in the dead. And that's mm -hmm. when I and, and yeah. my I have two co workers that I went in depth and had a like a two hour conversation about the whole Day of the Dead process, mm -hmm. yeah. like learning about the whole culture. It, 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 my infatuation started with it because I watched Coco. Mm -hmm. Really, <laughs> the truth. That's, uh, really that's, that's yep. what that's what sparked my interest about it. And I was like, "Can you send me somewhere where I can read it, but also talk to me about the process?" And they were like, "Okay, cool." Mm -hmm. And so, like, I learned about it, and it was very interesting to me. So, like, I get what you're saying as far as like teaching people stuff and, and talking about different things, but also you can't. As far as like with us, I think I'm kind of like Brian on some instances when it comes to talking about us and what we do in our culture. I get tired of saying the same stuff over and over. Mm -hmm. Like it, it gets it gets annoying sometimes saying the same mm -hmm. thing about what we've done and what what's happened because for one, a lot of the stuff that's happened to us and a lot of the things that we've gone through, the the Cliff Notes version is public now. Mm -hmm. It's the other things, the in depth stuff, is that you gotta go dig for. Yeah, like everybody can go see who Malcolm X is. Everybody yeah. can go see who Martin Luther King is. Everybody mm -hmm. can go. You gotta go dig to go figure out who Marcus Garvey is. Yeah, you Garvey. gotta go dig to go find uh -huh. who who the PU uh -huh. is. Like, you, like the 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 basic knowledge, you can go find that out with your your, your basic mm -hmm. Google search. Mm -hmm. You and know, I'm yeah. like, yeah, basic <laughs> things you should just try to find out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. But that's what I'm saying is like, and also, depending on, because they say credible sites. Because you can go look up some stuff and it don't make no lick of sense. And then when somebody explains it to you, like, oh, that's what they were trying I mean, to say. I mean, it's different yeah. if you come into me and asking me to make sure that what you're, under, you're, you're looking for it's credible, but if you come into me to just be like, pick my brain, mm. and you just don't, you ain't did no basic knowledge check on your own, it's right. like, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? When you do that, you got to, first of all, when dealing with me, especially about that topic, you got to understand there's going to be some modulation and inflections put in my voice that's going to make you think that I'm attacking you. For what took place. Right. Because <laughs> the passion over there. <laughs> so if if you don't understand why I'm so passionate about it or why you're gonna be like, well, why don't you you're just yelling at me. At me. No, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just like at the beginning. Hey, you wanna talk about it? I don't mind talking with you about it. But let me make sure that okay, you understand. I'm my passionate. Mind. Man, I give it a disclaimer. Hey. Because no, no, no. if you pissing me off, you won't get this disclaimer. It's not. It's not you pissing me exactly, off. It's just you the, better stop. The overall situation in itself, the fact that it even took place, the fact that people of sound mind and judgment who look just like you, who look just like me, but we not them. We, we not still, them. Still, but we still doing the but, same. But what you gotta understand, we say we not them. But as a, as a, even as advanced as we consider ourselves right now. We not, we not, we one paycheck away from that. All it takes is somebody to hop on TV and tell you not to like somebody. And you got people not shaking the president's hand. All it takes is for somebody to come out and tell you, oh, his jargon is is, is racially charged. And now you don't like that person at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just one conversation over one broadcast that you saw. That's why I, I keep telling people. Power as great as that show might have been, because I couldn't watch it all, as great as that show might have been, the concepts in which you put them forth to get these people this artificial ammunition to shoot against me and people who look like me, 
I got a kid who could go and be in an Ivy League school, but you just want to deal drugs? Bro, what are you saying to me? And then they go use that as grounds to be dis to discredit all the things that we have already done. Then you want to come back and, and act, because it don't be the people who go out and get the real information to ask you these questions. That's what people don't understand. It's not them. The person who knows about the about Black Wall Street ain't gonna ask me about Black Wall Street. The person who's gonna ask me about what we've done, I'm disproving the bull that you've been ingesting all week. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me y'all really do go out there and, and deal drugs? Like, are all black women out here doing X, Y, Z? Bro, you just talk to a lady in line. You just walk by one mm -hmm. who ain't doing what you said. Why you throw all in there? Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you only see what you want to see. So yeah. if you want to see me in a negative light, don't come over here trying to tell me I'm um, doing <clears> this just to get some information. You ain't getting nah. information. Uh you just want to double down on what you thought. And when you find out that what you thought was wrong, you ain't going to apologize or go around and tell the person next to it. <laughs> You're going to be the one person that's informed. And then we got to go back to what this man said. Next week, when another person watched power and get some false premonition of who I am, gonna come ask me who I am, and I'm gonna be like, I just told your homeboy. The dude standing right next to you, white your ass Like, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Don't got, waste my time! You gonna say the N word right there. You gonna say the N word You gonna say the N word Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's but, what I'm saying. That's what I have. I have to say it the same way, too. It's because I know people that I have actually talked to and was like, Actually tried to make change on it. All right, one, one, uh, hang on. Easy, easy way. A uh, woman that I was doing Taekwondo with and everything. Like, because they didn't know. This was before um, Biden and all the Juneteenth and all that stuff. This was, uh, like, this was, like, probably about six, seven years ago. And we were talking and everything. And they were like, oh, we're going to schedule practice on June 19th. I'm like, I ain't going to be here. Like, why you ain't going to be here? It's Juneteenth. What's Juneteenth? I'm like, you don't know what Juneteenth is? No, I'm gonna be honest. I'm from Michigan. I'm like, oh, okay. So let me go and inform you real quick and let you know. And I talked to her and I was like, well, this is Juneteenth. These were the issues that were going on. This is because slavery wasn't even done until the year afterwards because a couple of southern states decided to do all this stuff. She was like, really? I'm like, oh, the very next year, she came back and told me, and she was like, I'm not going to lie. I got my job to let people off on Juneteenth now. I'm like, oh, you actually went back and made a difference for people at your job. I'm still trying to find that person. Well, I found those people, so that's why I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you should have known this. This is your fault. I'm not saying it's their fault. It, but it's ain't like, it only it, takes if you get a person, Because if I go, like, say we all meet different times. You didn't know, I tell you. You might not tell anybody else, but I told you. Mm -hmm. Get get to be hunted. Tell you. You don't tell nobody? Fine. If I get to Germany and... What the fuck was that? Cut that out. Who's <laughs> 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 that? Okay. But if um, I get to you, and you may tell... 10, 15 people. But if I stop at you, now I have discredited you and I'm not thinking that you will tell 10, 15 people. Yeah. I just have to, as much as it hurts me, I have to keep sending that message over yeah, and over exactly. until it hits the mainstream. It's, and that's how I look at it because I'm like, oh, this one person may not care. Okay, what if that person, the very next person you meet is somebody that actually genuinely cared that could make a difference? And obviously, she made the difference in her own company. She made three hundred thousand a year. I'm like, I'm not, I won't be where you at. This is what I'll do. I will make a search list that you can go and you can click and search through these things and get the information you want. That, but even that's fine. Like if you say, hey, for you to get more information, I want you to look at these things. Send it to them. That's up to them to yeah. go get that information. If they really want to know. And if they really want to know, they'll search and then they'll come back to you. And now you have somebody that's up. And if they wasn't real serious about it, now you just eliminate them. Yes. It's, you know, my boy is a man of such short conversations anyway. See, <laughs> and that's I, what I'm saying. And, I, and but see, like I, I um, I don't really have like a big, big issue with talking to people. 
it's just some conversations get tired. It is. Like, yeah. you know, it, 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 I will say that, but like, I, I do feel like, you know, informing people about stuff is key. I do. I, when it all boils down to it, I feel like we should inform people about stuff. Because there are people that don't know. I will say that. But there are some people that don't want to know. Yeah. And that's I will true. say that. There's some that do don't that don't want no stuff. Yeah. They live they want to live in their perfect little ignorant bubble and act like everything that's very is, true. is is good is is, is is you rainbows and unicorns and don't let them happen in the world. There's some yeah. people yeah. just wanna live that way. Man, it's crazy that y'all yeah. think about this, like y'all saying this, and like I'm just putting it to like my kids. Sometimes it's people where you can say the same thing 10, 15 times. Mm-hmm. They're gonna somehow forget. <laughs> and then you gotta understand another 10 to 15 times. Right. And you just gotta keep reiterating like time and time again. It's like X, Y, and Z. This about X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. And again, it does get tired, but. It, we, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Gonna, uh, yeah, we're gonna finish it up on this one. Because my son over here is not going <laughs> to go. Um, okay, look at it like this. We talk about, we wish our parents, our grandparents and stuff would gave us game, uh, little things, to, little nuggets that actually helped us to better our lives to a certain extent. But why wouldn't we give other people the same game that we saying, oh, well, we wish we would learn this. We wish we would have did that. Because of another race? Because mm-hmm. I will tell, and that might be where I can consider myself racist, per se. Because when it comes to my kids, or kids that look like my kids, or kids that are in a minority category. Mm-hmm. Well, really, just kids in general. Because if, another, if a kid asks me, I'll tell them, and I'll, I'll modulate the voice in a way to where I'm not trying to be threatening or none of that. If you want to know, I'll tell you. And then, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll even give you a PC version. Yeah. Adults, I don't have as much poof or, 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 or tactical wherewithal in the conversation. In my opinion, I'm not the one you want to ask. It's, a lot, it's another journey out there who's going to do this with you a hundred times. Yeah. But you come over here with it, bro, you got to take it how I'm giving it because that's how my people had to get it. How you was giving or how people who look like you was giving But I get that. And that's why I guess I uh, compare it to, like, my kids whatever, is that my wife, she has tact. I don't have tact. I, I have, you do this, I react this way, I tell you about this, whether you're a kid or an adult. And it's... She always say this, not what you say, it's how you say it. Because if you say something, you can saying the greatest thing you can give the, the next big stock that, that someone's giving. If I'm cussing you out and then giving you the, the, like, this stock is going to be great, they ain't listening, they listen to the cuss words you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, for sure. I'm, that, I'm just not the one for the advice. I'll write a book. Like I said, I'll write a book. <laughs> you can edit it or some. I'll give you a search list. <laughs> but as far as asking me, I'm going to just be like, look, you don't understand. It's like the girl who got hit on 20 times a night. It's not that I was dismissing you. It's just that I dismiss, dismiss everybody else, and I'm tired of giving the same response. Like, I'm tired of telling you. At mm-hmm. this point, I would just, I'd rather just racism. And on the back, just say, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that's a perfect word to end. Get on that, though. Don't ask me. <laughs> this has been another episode of Something for the People. Be easy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>